Hi, foodie friends. Today we are making spaghetti squash lasagna. This is a healthier take on a comfort food classic. We're gonna use cream of ricotta cheese, mix it with browned ground turkey, spinach, because you know I like to add a little bit of veg in, top it with a zesty marinara sauce, and get this, a lemon panko topping, because you know I love the crunchies. So let's get started. We've got a spaghetti squash here. They are yellow oblong squashes. They come in a variety of different sizes. This one is a small to medium one, and sometimes they can be a little hard to wrestle. So watch me wrestle it. We are going to cut it lengthwise. And the reason we're gonna do that is because this recipe uses the spaghetti squash as a boat to serve it in, which makes it so much fun. My kids love it. So let's get started. Put in a sharp knife and hammer it down a little bit. You can get all the way through. Ooh, this one's actually pretty easy. So some folks like to poke it with a skewer, a couple of holes, and microwave it first. It makes it a little bit easier to get through. And if you have a larger one, that's not a bad idea. Just make sure you're being careful, because as you can see here, it gets stuck in there pretty good. And you, of course, don't want to have any injuries. We're getting close to having an injury here. Okay, there we go, I got it. Get it through the stem, and there we go. We've got two halves that we're gonna use as boats. Like a pumpkin, they've got seeds, they've got some membranes. Grab a spoon. Should come out pretty easy. We see here. It smells like pumpkin. Spaghetti squash is an excellent alternative to traditional pastas. Less carbs, more vegetable. The kids still love it. After we roast this off, we're going to use a fork to pull it into strands. And those strands look like pieces of pasta. They'll absorb in the flavors from the sauce that we're using and be Okay. They don't have to be perfectly cleaned out, just make sure they're fairly cleaned out. We're gonna roast them. Start with a little bit of olive oil. It's about a teaspoon. I'm just gonna drizzle it in here. Doesn't have to be perfect, eyeball it. Little basting brush, I'm gonna brush it onto the inside. This adds flavor, but it's also gonna help the salt and pepper adhere to the insides, get a little bit sticky. Okay, pepper. Freshly ground, of course. Pepper starts to lose its signature pepper flavor the moment it gets ground. So if you're using pre-ground pepper, it doesn't pack as much punch. And coarse kosher salt. You guys know that's my favorite. If we're measuring this, we'd probably have about a half a teaspoon going on here. But I eyeball, you know that. Okay, so. To roast up or to roast down? That is the question. We are going to start these down. When you roast down like this, you're gonna create steam. That steam is gonna help this cook, but also keep the moisture in the strands so they don't get dried out. But at the end, we're gonna flip it over so that it can brown and develop some deep, rich flavors on the outside. So. Oven's at 400, we're gonna go ahead and pop this in. The size of the squash is really gonna depend on how long we're roasting it for. This one's gonna take anywhere from 35 to 40 minutes. They're really hard to hurt, so you don't have to be super careful about how long. You'll know it's done when you can take a fork, scrape it, and all of those strands come up, just like strands of pasta. This recipe has several different pieces. We've got the spaghetti squash, the ricotta filling, the meat sauce, and then the topping. Now we are gonna make the ricotta filling. To start with one cup of baby spinach. You know I like to add in veggies whenever I can, hide them from the kids, hide them from my husband. 
for about one cup, one cup of ricotta cheese. This recipe will be the most flavorful and rich if you use a whole milk ricotta, so go full in with the ricotta. Freshly grated Parmesan cheese. Please, 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 please do not use shaker Parmesan cheese in this recipe. It doesn't melt as well as a freshly grated Parmesan cheese. And lemon. Lemon isn't something you usually see in lasagna, but it pairs so wonderfully. It gives a nice, fresh, and vibrant flavor. So we have the juice of one lemon. We fight with it here. Get all that lemon juice out. Lemony goodness. We're gonna see lemon juice twice in this recipe. First, juice in the ricotta filling, but then zest in the panko topping. Lemon juice and lemon zest have two very distinctly different flavors. The juice is a little bit tart, has that lemon flavor from the tartness, but pure lemony goodness comes from the zest. So we're gonna put that in the panko topping. One teaspoon of garlic powder and one and a half teaspoons of Italian seasoning. Mix it together. More of a mash than a mix because of those spinach leaves, but they will break down and not be so leafy as you bake it. Okay, good to go. We're gonna set this aside while we do the meat filling and the panko topping. Heat a large skillet, I like using cast iron over medium high heat. Heat one and a half teaspoons of olive oil. Add the chopped onion and garlic, sauteing until soft and fragrant. Next, add in the ground turkey, breaking into pieces and cooking until it's fully browned. Season liberally with salt and pepper. Add one cup of your favorite marinara sauce and stir until warmed through. Set it aside so that we can make the panko topping. Heat one and a half teaspoons of olive oil over medium high heat. Stir in the panko breadcrumbs and try to press into a flat layer. Toast the panko for two to three minutes, stir, Toast again for another two to three minutes until it's a nice golden brown. Add in the lemon zest, stir well, and set aside. Cooked our spaghetti squash. It is nice and tender, fully roasted, and now we're going to shred it. This shouldn't take a lot of work. As you can see, the fibers have separated horizontally. Just use a fork and go ahead and pull at it and it will very easily come apart into shreds that look just like spaghetti, which is why it gets its name, spaghetti squash. Okay, we'll do that with both of them. Don't over pull it. If you over pull it, just like real pasta, it'll get kind of gummy and mushy and that's not what we're going for here. We want a nice el dente spaghetti squash. Add the spaghetti squash strands directly to the ricotta cheese and spinach mixture. It's a little tender, so be careful if you wanna keep it in a boat. The boat is a serving suggestion. You don't have to do it that way, but it does look pretty and it's lots of fun. Okay. Mix those in, just toss them. Again, you don't wanna over mix because you don't want them to get gummy, but you wanna get them good and combined. The heat from the spaghetti squash will start to wilt the spinach, and then another quick zap in the oven, and it'll be fully wilted by the time you're ready to serve. Go ahead and take this and get it back into your boats. Evenly divide it up there. If you're not serving it in the spaghetti squash, go ahead and put these in individual casserole dishes. Next, add your meat sauce or ground turkey with marinara. Oh, smells so good. Got all the onion, all the garlic, you know how much I love garlic, in a zesty sauce. Okay. All on in there. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. -mm 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 -mm. Mozzarella cheese. This is freshly grated mozzarella cheese. The best kind, okay. 
about a half a cup. And lastly, the toasted lemon panko, which is really what makes this recipe so special. All those crunchies. Evenly divide between your two squash. Doesn't look like a lot, but after you start adding it on, it is just the perfect amount. We're gonna pop this back into the oven for eight to 10 minutes until the cheese is melted, it's warmed through, and the spinach has wilted. Spaghetti squash just came out of the oven, the cheese is melted, and we have one last step before we eat. Fresh basil. I love anything fresh, and you know me, I love adding lots of color to any dish. Be generous with the basil, and you're ready to go, ready to serve. Let's see how we did. Want to get layers of everything in there. Mmm. Foodie friends, this has layers of sophistication. We have creamy ricotta with that spinach, a little bit of bite from the tomato sauce and the ground turkey. And of course, this lemon panko topping. This is a great gluten-free option as long as you leave off those panko breadcrumbs and you can also make it vegetarian. This is an excellent choice for an easy weeknight meal, but also special enough for a dinner party. From my kitchen to yours, have a great day.